So what's going on guys, my name is Mr. Dalek JD, and I have such an awesome thing to show you all within this video. Call of Duty World War 2 has a new community event, and normally I wouldn't be too fussed, but this is a Zombies multiplayer crossover. Zombies have invaded the multiplayer backgrounds of World War 2, so it's time to fight back with a new community event called Attack of the Undead. This is the first time that Zombies has ever been in multiplayer, and this looks so amazing. I don't want this to ever leave the game it looked so freaking cool i'm going to play the trailer in full before we break it down and talk about everything involved in this community event but if you think this looks amazing and you want to see this style of content more often in call of duty drop a thumbs up on the video let's jump into that trailer Contact left. Wait, what the bloody hell was that? We got enough on our plate, now we gotta deal with an attack of the undead. Droves of zombies have weaseled their way into our multiplayer maps, and it's up to you to put them back in the ground along with the rest of your enemies. We're bringing the fight to some of your favorite maps, along with a new addition, Groston House, with new game modes where it's PvP VZ. Like Infected, if you're one of the undead, try and turn as many soldiers as possible. Horde point. It's a lot like hard point, except, you know, zombies. And relic of the undead. Grab the relic and hold on for as long as you can. The names say it all and beg the question, is the enemy of my enemy my friend? No, zombies are not your friends. To help you fight your way through these hordes of shifty shamblers, we've got a slew of new weapons for you, like the Nambu Type 2 SMG, the Blunderbuss, the Lever Action Sniper Rifle, the PTRS-41 Sniper Rifle, the Stinger LMG, the Fire Axe, and a big sword. We've also got a new community challenge. Get together with your mates and send as many of the undead back to the grave as you can in order to fill up your meter and unlock rewards. Like a Tesla gun that uses science to vaporize things. And an all new way to turn your favorite emblems into weapon charms. Attack of the Undead comes May 29th with new weapons, uniforms, game modes, and a community challenge. So gear up, gents. We've got a lot of cleaning up to do. So there we have it. This is Attack of the Undead, the very first time we've ever seen a multiplayer and zombies crossover event for Call of Duty. It starts today and it ends on June 26th. This event features a return of the fan favorite Infected mode, which a lot of people love and it's always been a very fun multiplayer mode to play in my opinion. It's quite crazy to me how Infected has never not been popular. It's like always extremely, extremely popular. And at this time, it's got actual zombies in it. These zombies have freaking pickaxes in the hand. It's crazy. And there is two more modes which they showed, of course, which is Horde Point and Relic of the Undead. Horde Point is essentially Hard Point, but there are actual literal zombies invading the map whilst you're capturing this. I don't know how exactly this is going to work. I mean, we'll find out on June 5th because we only have Infected to play right now. And then we have Relic of the Undead, which is essentially Gridiron. But in this game mode, you must hold onto the zombie head for as long as possible to earn points think of the game as gridiron without any goals or a deadly version of keep away and as it seems with most events we've been getting a lot of new multiplayer maps added for free and this event also features groston house as part of the event for a limited time which is really really freaking cool groston house of course you guys know this but any people that haven't played zombies on world war 2 and have no idea it's the tutorial map where zombies takes place and it's now been transformed into a multiplayer map and the official 
official description is set near the Kaifhauser Mountains. Groston House is anything but a peaceful cabin in the woods. Close call to fighting is plentiful inside the cabin, where there is little room to hide from enemies. This will also be the setting where three new multiplayer modes featuring the undead will take place. Not only that, but from the trailer we also saw that there is a community challenge, which I believe is to get 2 billion kills on zombies within the multiplayer. And if we manage that, then we unlock some really cool rewards, including the fact of using the Tesla gun in multiplayer itself. I don't know quite exactly how that's going to work. Maybe it'll only be a weapon which you can select in your loadout during the infected modes or the special modes. But either way, that's really cool that we're seeing that. Like, could you imagine back in the day that we'd see like, I don't know, the Wonder Waffer inside of Black Ops 1 multiplayer? Like, it just sounds crazy. And we're killing freaking human controlled zombies. This is like almost like as if getting turned within a more recent Call of Duty game that has zombies in it. It's pretty cool. It's probably the closest thing that we'll get to, you know, playing as a zombie in Call of Duty. It seems Jason Blundell definitely does not want to put turned back anytime soon, but who knows what could happen going forwards. In addition to there also being a new event, there are loads of new weapons that have just been added into the game as well, including the PTRS Sniper, which I loved back in World at War, the Stringer LMG, a Fire Axe, a Claymore Sword, the Blunderbuss, and a Lever Action. So a lot of stuff going on. The headquarters also got a brand new makeover as well. It's been completely destroyed by the zombie hordes, and Cameron Dayton's actually put out a really cool explanation as to why this has happened. Now, if you don't know the ending of the shadowed throne then this is probably a big spoiler but everyone knows dr straub died on the shadowed throne so cameron dayton's explanation is with the demise of straub the undead horde has surged out of control the shaffers which i've can't pronounce at all, but it's German for like shepherds, claim to be driving this madness, but German military losses match the Allies' corpse for corpse. So essentially, once Dr. Straub died, the zombie outbreak went crazy. No one could control the zombies, and that's why they have infected multiplayer. In the headquarters, you can see some zombies chained up in cells, which looks pretty awesome, and you can also see some blimps flying around, so it's definitely not the last. We've seen that those blimps, at least, seem to be bleeding into the world of multiplayer. Now on screen now I'm showing you guys some infected gameplay on the map Groston House and what's really cool about this is we never saw this map before in the daytime and also the tutorial level really restricts the amount of like uh, area which you can actually physically explore. This multiplayer map actually gives you a lot more area to explore than you could in that tutorial. So we can go all around the house, I can go inside the house, upstairs, I can jump out the windows, and I can go all the way around the house through the main tutorial section as well as some other like areas which we didn't see before like a secret cave area and it's pretty awesome. So we're playing infected and obviously if you don't know what it is you're surviving against player controlled zombies that are dead set on infecting and converting all remaining humans. These zombies also wield a pickaxe and they have a few other abilities as well. It's got unlimited sprint and you can also throw down a tactical insertion which is a zombie skull so that when you die you can spawn back near wherever you want to be so you can go and kill whoever's left. And obviously the point of it is is to try and kill as many humans as possible but if you are the human you have to be the last person standing. Pretty simple stuff and it's pretty damn fun within this mode but I absolutely can't wait for the other two modes to be put into multiplayer as as fun as Infected is, it feels like these games end very, very quickly. And sometimes Infected is like that, of course. You can just, you know, just sit there and uh, camp to your heart's content and get as many kills as you want to get a V2 rocket and end the game or whatever. But it seems like with Infected in here, it's just very, very quick. Everyone's dying real quick and uh, games are normally quite quick, especially on Groston House. But I highly recommend jumping on the game and trying all this out. It is really, really fun. And I know that the developers have put in a lot of hard work to actually get all of this up and running. It's really, really damn impressive that we're even getting this crossover, as I honestly never would have expected to see this within World War II, let alone any Call of Duty game with multiplayer. Every time one of these community 
events happen, we always complain that Zombies doesn't get any love. And whilst not necessarily did we see anything change within the actual Zombies mode, we have Zombies friggin' infecting multiplayer, which is just amazing, something I never thought we'd ever see. We did have a big update with Zombies during the St. Patrick's Day update, which included amazing small Easter eggs with Insider Zombies, which gave us a brand new camo. And I definitely think we're going to get more things like that, not only within World War II, but also going forward into the other Call of Duty games. It's just really, really good stuff. And these seasonal events, man, as long as they involve zombies, I am going to be there within a heartbeat. Let me know what you think of this all down below in the comment section. But make sure to subscribe as always so you keep up to date with the latest news on Call of Duty. And if again, if you enjoyed, drop a thumbs up. But I've been Mr. Dalek JD. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on another video very, very soon.